Hey guys, Boris Nelson BK4. So welcome to our Forza Tech for 12, 17, 13. As always, trading for exchange margin carries a high level versus minority super for all investors. I ask you to read this to come in very carefully to understand all the risks of the trading margin and to seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. Well, um, kind of an interesting Monday today. We have sort of more of the same on the euro side where we failed for the fourth day in a row, the 38 handle, um, came back off of it. Still sort of maintaining this 37 support. And until we break it to the downside, um, the bias remains relatively neutral. It's a consolidative bias effectively. And if we do take out the 38s, especially if we take out the 3830s, certainly turns a much more positive and puts us on fresh highs for the year. But for the time being, this kind of a uh, fade of the 38s continuously, really starting to put more downside pressure here. And if 37s go, if we start to push the 37s, it really opens up a full test of the 36s, which is where we had the big breakout here for this double uh, double top. It, effectively, I think if 37 goes, uh, it puts us on path towards a double top formation and a test of the 36s. Similar kind of a structure and cable in the sense that we're also just getting lower and lower highs here um, and continuing to fade off the, um, we made this, this half-hearted attempt at 64, 50, 64, 65, could not quite make 65s, and they've just been fading ever since. Also now holding 63s, that that um, basically holds around 62, 50. That's a key level here. If that goes, that opens up a run all the way down to possibly about 61, maybe even as far as 60, but certainly towards the 61 level as we unwind that particular trade. And then dollar yen um, kind of consolidating itself. Um, the old, it does look mildly more positive in the sense that 102.50s hold. But dollar yen also failed big time here at the fresh highs in front of 104. Still, still holding the consolidative tone. And really on a longer term basis, you could um, have a more positive bias on dollar yen. If there's any of the dollar pairs that have a more positive bias, it's dollar yen in the sense that you have higher lows here still maintaining in place. But if this low is broken, that would pretty much put the, uh, the structure of higher lows uh, would break the structure of higher lows, basically 102.50. That's the key thing. If we if we can if we break that to the downside, it really turns it from a up consolidative move in an uptrend towards essentially a topping formation that puts us back on down towards the 102s and possibly even the 101s um, as the year comes back. So dollar obviously in, in big flux. FOMC on Wednesday, that's going to be the key trigger. Everybody's kind of prepositioning against that. If FOMC suggests that hey, they're not going to do anything. Um, nobody expects them to do anything today, but they're not going to do anything in January and most likely will we'll really only consider it seriously in March. Um, that could be the move that could push you know, the uh, dollar yen to the downside. If conversely they get a little, little uh, more hawkish, then this could possibly take out the highs and the euro and the pound, which already started to reverse, could really start to come back in uh, to the downside. On the com dollars, the Aussie holding bid here barely 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 at 89 uh, today we have the rba minutes it's going to be interesting to see if they want to just pound it more uh, to the downside if 89s go the really big test is going to be the 8850s that's going to be the crux of where the market is going to want to test us because that's really going to be the butt double bottom so far we've made sort of a um a mild triple bottom here at this 989 handle uh but it's precarious and we certainly do have potential here for further downside action we'll see how this trades out to the top side, in order for us to really relieve all this downside pressure, we need to recapture 90 and hold it. Um, we, that would be the former support that now becomes resistance. So we need to just basically pretty much hold it, consolidate there, and then begin to rebuild towards 91s, 92s. If we can't do any of this, if we start breaking down the 89s um, and start testing the 8850s, then we really have a potential here towards the 87s, uh, maybe even 86.50s on, on, on a full unwind. Remember, RBA wants to see this thing at 85, and they'd rather see it sooner rather than later. So we'll see if um, if that plays out as they want. Uh, for the time being, Aussie is just a very, very tepid um, rebound trade uh, that's very vulnerable to further sell-offs. Um, and lastly, let's take a look at dollar cad, which has gotten a little bit of press lately because a lot of people are starting to get short the caddy. The thing that's interesting about the cad is that the 107 is really flamed out considerably and has gotten uh, uh, sort of a big resistance level here. So the fact that we came down to 106 is suggests that maybe this was a near-term top. Uh, we probably can consolidate here between 105, 106. But if we don't make the 107s again, if we make a lower high here against that, that would suggest that dollar cat actually comes back down towards the 105. Um, and then in turn, if you have a weaker Aussie and a relatively um, buoyant CAD, um, 
calls for further downside action in Aussie CAD, which is an interesting trade, I think, here, because we are now at these very, very key support levels here at 95s. So basically, we broke 95s to the downside, um, but the real, real serious break will be this, this, this break of 9350s, which then takes us all the way down to, to a test of a, uh, of a double bottom of 9150. Um, either way, I think that even if, if 94s go to the downside, it creates a potential for further downside action. Um, it's an interesting trade because it's, um, it's really showing the divergence between the two. Um, also, Euro Aussie had a little bit of a. Let me just find my Euro Aussie. Um, came off the highs a little bit here, but still relatively holding a bit relatively well at 54s. And if you can take out the highs over here, um, that would suggest maybe we, we, we can march all the way out to the 55, which is a very, very key um, round number figure. Um, and, and it may press that way, especially if we get any kind of weakness out of Aussie today. So we'll see how it trades out. Uh, for the time being, everything is in a more or less holding pattern ahead of, ahead of FOMC, but around the key edges and key levels. So definitely worth watching. Wish you guys the best of luck, best of trading. Boris Schlossberg over.